The Sun and Fun Flight Expo hit Lakeland this weekend. The annual Artisan Fair is only two weeks away. And which organization won the FSC Dean's Cup this year? All this and more on FSC Today. Good afternoon and welcome to FSC Today. I'm Katie McCabe. Today is April 9th, 2014. Our weekly newscast will keep you updated on the latest news, sports, and entertainment. Bikini season is on its way and Go Healthy FSC takes a look at how you can get healthy and happy for summer. That time of year is coming again. The time of year that everybody is trying to get in shape for. Summer's almost here, meaning we're all hitting the gym twice as hard. I think all girls are a little nervous getting their bathing suits after winter. But if you're short on time, there are some quick workouts you can do from home or even your dorm room. They can be 10 to 15 minutes if they're just a really high intensity and, and we have a lot of really neat protocols we use for that kind of thing. Before summer comes, I feel like a lot of people start working out extra hard, start eating a lot healthier, trying to get that beach summer body that they want so they can feel comfortable in their bikinis. Quick plyometric workouts can be very beneficial for the body. A squat jump, you can do walking lunges, you can do push-ups, you can do a plank, you can do sit-ups. Being able to at least get quick workouts in each day can really help you feel better about your body and be confident when getting into your bikini. Just sort of changing from one thing to the next really gets your heart rate going. I live off campus, so I try to fit a lot of my workouts in between classes at home so that I don't, have, I don't always have time to go to the gym. The biggest thing is just to make it fun. I, I think it's really good to do it with people. It always helps you push yourself a little bit harder. There's no excuses on a rainy day to not work out when you can work out at home. To learn more on health, fitness, and nutrition, follow Go Healthy FSC on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. This weekend, students and residents enjoyed Lakeland's 40th annual Sun and Fun Flight Expo. The celebration boasted more than 500 vendors, including food trucks and an exclusive kids' zone. Each day, a show of planes flew over Lakeland from 2.30 to 5 p.m. This year, Team Aerodynamics hosted a night show complete with fireworks. Even though the festival ended on Sunday, you can always visit the Sun and Fun Air Museum year-round. Explorations 5 Children's Museum is hosting their annual festival on April 12th to support their nationally recognized Week of Young Children. The event is attended by thousands from Lakeland and other cities nearby. It draws attention to the importance of enhancing education through playful and interactive learning adventures. Volunteers are needed from 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. the day of the event and will be provided with water, snacks, and lunch. The 5th Annual Artisan Fair is coming to Lakeland at Highland Park Church of Nazarene. It will be held on April 26th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and admission is free. The festival will include over 50 art, craft, food, and game vendors. Some vendors include Tweets for Dogs, Mushy's Knit Palace, and PJ's Crafts World. For more information, visit lakelandartisanfair.weebly.com. Now let's check in with an update from David Tomczynski on our mock athletic teams. Hello Mock fans and welcome to another edition of Southern Sports. I'm David Tomczynski. Let's get you caught up on the past week in Florida Southern Athletics. Mock's baseball won a 7-6 nail biter against Nova Southeastern on Friday in 12 innings. Right fielder Dominic Brugnoni had a solid day going 3 for 5 with 4 RBIs including a walk-off single to left to clinch game 1. The Mocks would then finish off the Sharks taking both games of the Saturday doubleheader Brugnoni stayed hot, knocking three hits and crossing the plate twice in game one, while designated hitter Scotty Withrow cranked three hits and, and an RBI. Pitcher Brian Johnson went seven strong, giving up just one run and waving four batters to run away with an 8-1 victory. Mox pitching held strong in game two as Ben Richardson hurled seven innings, striking out four batters to solidify a 1-0 victory and a series sweep against the 13th ranked Sharks. The men's track team continued their season on Friday at the University of Florida Pepsi Relays. The mocks had four runners competing in two events. Bobby Ormsby finished in the top 30 of the 5,000 meter race. Ormsby was the highest finisher of the eight non-division one runners competing in the event. Lady Mock softball had a rough weekend as they were swept by Nova Southeastern in a three-game showdown. The women dropped game one on Friday night 12-4. 
They then lost game one of Saturday's doubleheader as catcher Kim Booker was two for two, but the Lady Mocs would fail to score, losing eight nothing. Second baseman Leah Pemberton went three for three with a run, and, and right fielder Heather Brickmeyer was also perfect at the dish, going two for two with an RBI in game two as Lady Mocs late comeback was stalled. We caught up with senior Christy Bailey to talk about the season. Tony D'Angelo has more. Thank you very much for the throw, David. Very kind of you. Uh, today we have a really entertaining show. We're joined with softball cornerstone, Christy Bailey. Christy, thank you very much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. Cool. Now, I'm under the impression that you guys are in the meat of your softball season right now. Whole bunch of conference games still to play. Uh, you guys had a tough series against Tampa and against Nova, and you guys had some success against Florida Tech. Uh, can you just walk me through the last three series you guys have had a little bit? Um, well, Tampa was one of our first, like, conference games we had of this, like, whole uh, shift. But, so that was our first one, and we didn't play bad as a team. I think, like, we lost, but it was only by, like, a couple runs. Yeah, so it was close. Yeah, so that was, like, I felt like that was a good start into it. And then Florida Tech was awesome. We came together as a team and we just, um, everyone was on the same page. We were hitting together collectively and so it was really fun. And I think we grew a lot that weekend. And then this past weekend we played Nova and that wasn't so great. Um, Another strong team though, they're yes. on top of the conference. Yes, they're a very good hitting team. But I think afterwards we just, we grew a lot closer. We learned a lot from it and it's not something that's gonna happen again. So I think because Coming from losing those three games, we're going to come back stronger for the rest of our series we have. That makes sense. Um, you guys have Rollins coming up next mm -hmm. and you know, more conference games to finish the year and then the conference tournament, reg regionals, etc. What is the team's mindset um, as every game is seemingly uh, a postseason game from here on out? I think it's um, just game by game, inning by inning really, just trying to focus on um, Getting hits collectively is our main thing we want to work on. Just if we focus one game out of the time and get those wins one by one, we'll be good and hopefully get to go to postseason. Cool. That's a good mindset to have. Yeah. Uh, now let's talk about you for a second. You, uh, you've played infield for your first couple of years here, and they moved you to designated hitter. Uh, what has that transition kind of been like for you? It was different at first, but it's really fun now because like just hitting, you can focus on it more. So I feel a lot more relaxed during our games and I can just go up and focus on hitting and getting the job done. And it's worked for me, so. That's good, yeah, so you've been hitting the ball pretty well this year. Um, okay, we'll get you out on this question. Uh, who have been uh, some players that we should look out for in the next coming weeks for you guys to perform or who, who has done a good job for you guys up to this point so far? We've had a lot of good people this year coming up. Um, Jess, she's our shortstop this year. She's been really consistent in the field and hitting. She's always getting a game-winning hit or scoring runs. Um, our pitchers, Chelsea and Brandy, they've both been really strong. And um, Kelly and Hannah is an incoming freshman. And she's been doing really great, like in clutch situations, she's been put in to close and she just really stepped up a lot. So, and our catcher, Kimmy, she's been a power hitter, like another power hitter we've, mm -hmm. that we've had, so. I think those have just been really um, helpful to our team and always there to like pick people up. Awesome. Christy, thank you very much for being on the show today. We thank love you. having you. Um, okay, that's all we have for this segment. Uh, now let's take a quick look at women's tennis. They are on a hot streak right now. The Lady Mox pulled out a huge win on April 5th, taking out 16th ranked Nova Southeastern. When everyone goes on the court, they really think about, okay, I just will focus on this point and on this game. And when they achieve the result of winning, then at the end, we win as a team. This season, we've been able to figure it out, the better doubles uh, partners. And uh, everybody is, play, is playing very consistent and being able to finish in the points and finishing the matches. Why do you play so good? Will you think that to me? <laughs> You better not be filming. <laughs> Sabine and Magda both alluded to some key players that have helped the team achieve their success. Especially Dominique, 
which is a freshman. Uh, she has been doing really good. She doesn't have a lot of experience on the court, and she's <clears throat> responding really good against uh, playing against uh, players with a lot of experience. Pamela and uh, Tori did a great job because they don't play as mat as many matches. So coach kind of put them on the court without, they didn't really know that they will have to play. And they finished their match really uh, quickly and with a lot of confidence. So that definitely helped us to get those five points. With this 5-4 win, the Mocs remain third in conference only behind Barry and Lynn and look to finish their season really well in the Sunshine State Conference Tournament. For Southern Sports, I'm Tony D'Angelo. Women's lacrosse had their win streak snapped by number 10 Lindenwood at home. The Lady Mocs were ranked number 5 and had won 7 games in a row prior to their this past game. Junior Lorraine Hoover led the women with 4 goals and 2 assists. The Lady Mocs next game will be on the road against conference rival St. Leo. Men's tennis ended a 2 match losing streak Wednesday as the Moccasins defeated Weber International in a non-conference match. With the victory the Mocs improved to 9-8 and eight on the season. The newly ranked number 14 men's lacrosse team had a great week by first winning against Lynn University 19-1, followed by an impressive 11-10 win over St. Leo. The wins moved the team's streak to five straight as they improved to 9-3. Their next game will be at home against Florida Tech. Be sure to go out and support all of your Moccasin athletic teams and follow us on Twitter at FSC Sports. For Southern Sports, I'm David Tomchinski. This past Saturday, a frost-proof woman was struck by an oncoming car and admitted to Lakeland Regional Hospital. Deborah Singletary was crossing Scenic Highway from a McDonald's. She was hit in the southbound lane and was airlifted to Lakeland Regional with a broken leg and pelvis bone, as well as a head injury. Her injuries were not life-threatening and she is in stable condition. After 18 years of being open, the popular Polk County attraction, Fantasy of Flight, has closed its doors to the public this past Sunday. According to the owner, Kermit Weeks, the museum cannot continue to operate because of financial issues. Weeks will continue to rent out the space for private events. Customers who prepaid for a day trip or season pass to Fantasy of Flight will receive refunds through the company. In national news, a man jumped onto the tracks of the Chicago subway system this past week to save the life of a woman who had fallen onto the tracks. Eddie Palacios leaped onto the track and waved the, to stop the train from hitting the fallen woman. Thanks to Palacios' orange hoodie, the train spotted the pedestrians and was able to stop in time. Just four hours into her first shift as a 911 operator, a Georgia woman took a call and heard a familiar voice on the line. Her aunt was calling about her dad going into diabetic shock. The operator walked her aunt through the steps to save her dad's life, staying on the line with her until par paramedics arrived. In school news, the honor celebration last week recognized students for their work to the FSC community. Kyle Shadow has more. Student Involvement hosted the honor celebration at Annie Pfeiffer Chapel on Thursday night. Awards were given to students and organizations for their work in the Florida Southern community over the school year. Awards included Best New Organization, Philanthropic Awards, and Fraternity and Sorority Life Awards. Some people were honored for being at the top of their field. I won the Florida Southern Male Resident Advisor of the Year Award. Winning this award was kind of like a, like a big pat on the back. It was being an RA this year, first year RA is very tough. You have to work really, really hard. And so knowing that, first of all, that I even got nominated for the award was, was awesome. Um, and winning it was even better. It just kind of goes to show you that hard work pays off. I do a little bit more than what you think of at first when you think of an RA. When you think of an RA at first, you think of door decks, bulletin boards, programs. But the best part about being an RA is uh, just the connections you make with your residents. Zeta Tau Alpha won the most awards for the night, including the Best Philanthropic Event, Sorority Woman of the Year, the Dean's Cup, and the Rising Star of the Year. This is the recipient of the Rising Star Award. Um, the Rising Star Award is given to a freshman or sophomore under 60 hours um, who is seen in their organization as someone who is a rising star um, and someone that they see a great potential uh, leadership in. I think that there was a lot of people that were very deserving of this award, um, but I think that specifically I deserved to at least be a nominee for this award um, because of my passion that I have for Florida Southern um, and the passion that I have for my organization. For more information on the honor celebration or any campus events, contact the Center for Student Involvement in the Band Show. 
Thanks, Kyle. Remember to stay involved in the campus community to be nominated for next year's honors celebration. Thanks for joining us on FSC today. Be sure to tune in next week for the latest here at FSC and the community. Have a great day.